Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. we got a tremendous show lined up for you today. There's some great stuff. And, of course, uh, we continue to get really cool things mm-hmm. uh, sent by... The greatest audience ever. Ever in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. Pathead Mike Hermanette <laughs> sent us these uh, Mean Streets of Helena Look shirts. These are nice. These are cool. A high them. quality. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. I survived the mean streets of Helena. And all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> See, look, I'm a survivor too now because I, I was just up there last week, two that's, weeks ago. That's right. You didn't survive 18 years no, no. like I did, but no, uh, no. you did survive, what, two days? Uh, two or three? Half hour. A half hour? I just drove through it, you know. I mean, I did have to, oh, I will I thought say, you stopped. And hung out in Helena for a while. I mean, we got our picture taken in front of the Capitol. We okay. went to Jimmy John's. Which, oh, yeah. there's a Jimmy John's now. Huh? Yeah, right there at the Capitol. Ah, big time. And then my son and I. This is this is where I earned that that T-shirt. We had to walk, Pat, through a parking lot. No. From a Jimmy John's. Dodging bullets all the way. Of course, to the Safeway. Yeah. That's grocery store, and uh, that was. Uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk about it. Kind of like Jeffy with an Isle of Spice. But here we are. <laughs> it was uh, quite a... I don't like to talk about it. Uh, but, but that walk uh, across the Safeway parking lot in Helena, Montana was something else. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Mike. These are really cool shirts. Appreciate it. Uh, also, something really cool happened in New York that it's hard to believe it's real. Hmm. It's like this hoverboarder guy hoverboarding through New York oh, uh, no. Times Square. Look at that. Like the Green Goblin. Yeah. That's, uh... It's almost like a, uh... uh, Like a... A drone, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. A large drone. He's riding on a really heavy-duty drone. Uh, It's not exactly hoverboard-like, but it's still very cool. Yeah, that was... Huh. I mean, that's cool, but I don't know that it's practical. Yeah, I don't either. Even in New York City, I mean, people be shooting at you. Be knocking you down. Oh, throwing they, stuff. They at would. You. Yeah, yeah, they would. And then you'd be in trouble. Uh, that would hurt. But he's. I mean, he's not super high off the ground, but probably still high enough to do some damage if somebody knocked you off of it. That would be cool to mm. experience at like a like a fair or something. You yeah, know, like you yes. pay. Now I'm not paying more than. I give you two bucks for a ride on that thing. That's about a it. full two dollars. A full. I mean, I'm, wow. You're right. A buck fifty. That wasn't believable. <laughs> but I mean, that'd be made fun to experience. <clears throat> yeah. But it's not practical. And I'm a practical guy. And we still haven't come up with the board from, you know, Back to the Future. I know. That one that he rides in, was it 2015, I think? No. What? 2000. No, it was 2000 and. Yeah, it was 2015, wasn't it? 2000. It was 2015. Yeah, was it? Thank you. Excuse me for living. Sorry, uh, guys. Uh, don't test me. Yeah. So, yeah, he just hops <laughs> on that. And it just looks like a regular skateboard. Yeah. That would that's be really, what we need. That's what we need, and that would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, that's about as as practical as flying cars, apparently, because that's the other thing that's not going to happen. And yeah, we need that sports almanac, too. Every time I watch a Star Trek, you know, because every once in a while I'll get, I'll get nostalgic for the Star Trek days and, and watch a couple episodes. And, you know, they have those pads that they give each other all the time, and it they look like iPads. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they do very little. I mean, they show you what the uh, uh, what jobs are going to be done for the course of the day, what the schedule is. Nothing like the iPads really do. Well, it's which like is the menu. Everything. Well, it's like the menu or something on there or something. I mean, but it was very minimal. Yeah. And and sometimes they'll give you <laughs> a, an individual one with an individual book on it. You know, Ooh. they'll say it's a book, and you know, you can have an entire library on mm. your iPad. So, I mean, in some ways, we exceeded some of the sci-fi. In other ways, it's not so much, like the hoverboard and the flying It's disappointing. Car. Yeah, a little disappointing. What's more disappointing is when you get some breaking news that, uh, oh, here comes an invention that's going to change the world, and your mind is racing to, we're going to get that, mm-hmm. and we get the segue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to change the way cities are designed. And then we wait, and we wait, <laughs> uh-huh. and it's it's it's... 
Paul Blart Mall Cop. Yeah, it did change the way mall cops got around the mall. <laughs> it did change that yeah. for civilization. So thank you, Dean Kamen. Mm. Appreciate it. That was really amazing. Uh, I don't even know if Dean Kamen's still alive, but uh, what an invention. Would you rather have a hoverboard or the iPad? You know, if you're going to have one of those sci-fi kind of things that's predicted and then happens or not, I think the iPad's probably more useful to us than a hoverboard would be. Uh, Although the hoverboard would be cool. He is alive. He's 70 years old. Oh, he's only 70? Hmm. Wow. Huh. Uh, All right. Quite a battle brewing uh, right now in the Senate because there's some huge bills to be decided, one of which is the... uh, Aren't they doing the voting bill this week? Yeah, today they're going to try to do the... um, the For the People Act. For the people. Uh-huh. <laughs> Remember, it's always the opposite of what they say. Yep. And so it'll probably pass in the House, but will it pass in the Senate? And the big deal is the filibuster. Well, now the Democrats are all against the filibuster, of course, because that could prevent it from passing in the Senate. <laughs> who's ever not in power hates the filibuster. Who's ever in power uh or who's ever not in mm-hmm. power loves the filibuster. It's just the opposite. We know what you mean. And if you are in power, you hate it, and you think it's unconstitutional, and you uh, forget everything you said about it before when you were in the minority. And so traditionally, what, you need 60 votes in the Senate yeah. to stop debate and get onto the vote? Right. And uh, right now it's a 50-50 split as far as Democrat and Republican, and they've got the votes, uh, or they, they, they want to vote to make the filibuster a thing of the past. And, and they got two Democrat senators. Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin both uh, are going to side with the Republicans, it looks like, on this. If they can hold to that mm-hmm. and withstand the pressure they're going to get, because there's going to be pressure brought to bear on these people like yeah. you can't believe. They're meeting, both of them are meeting today with Joe Biden. And I'm sure that'll be fun for them. Oh, man. <sighs> so you'll know what dirt they have on Manchin and Cinema long about mid afternoon today. Yeah. Uh, especially after Biden says to them, <laughs> "Excuse me, what, Mr. President?" <laughs> um, no, no, I'm, I'm. I think the filibuster should stay in place. <laughs> what's he talking? What's this pudding talk he's doing here? What is the that? proof is the pudding's in eating. <laughs> <laughs> the proof is in the puddings in the eating. I bet he gets double pudding today if he convinces them. To uh, support an yeah. end to the filibuster. Yeah, he'll get a nice little reward. A little doggy treat. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. There's a coalition of progressive organizations uh, that yesterday announced the launch of a one and a half million TV ad campaign targeting, of course, uh, Kirsten C- <sighs> Cinema. 20 Arizona groups joined Just Democracy, a coalition of more than 40 black and brown led organizations promoting democracy reform in unveiling two hard-hitting ads targeting cinema in one ad titled words an indigenous activist a black community (laughs) activist and a black pastor face the camera and ask i thought you were setting up a joke (laughs) yeah wait what was it again so there's a black community activist a a black pastor uh and an indigenous activist walk into a bar oh no yeah what's in there the filibuster (laughs) (laughs) And uh, they ask, why is Kirsten Cinema standing by and allowing Republican leaders to threaten our rights? Okay. While footage of Cinema's recent <laughs> press conference with uh, John Cornyn plays. Oh, no. She showed up. Look at her here, standing wow. next to a filthy Republican. Just standing next to him? Standing next to him. That seems not harsh. That's a bigger indictment than if she'd killed someone huh yeah yeah okay that, that's interesting the ads call on cinema to support scrapping the filibuster of course and to vote yes on proceeding to the for the people act which would uh of course promote online automatic voter registration expand <laughs> opportunities to vote by mail affirm a commitment of congress to restore the voting rights act and make other reforms uh-huh everyone is registered just automatically. Yeah. In other words... I think if you have a social security number, you're registered, Yeah, right? so I, roughly how, how many uh, adult uh, voting age adults would that be? Probably a couple hundred million? Mm-hmm. Well, there's no fraud possibilities None. there. None. 
No, it's the more the merrier. And who said dead people don't have any rights? Hmm. You know? That's a good point. So don't try to clean them off the rolls either. Just read a story about uh, one of the states. Which one was it? I can't remember. But they're trying to clean 100,000 votes of people like, you know, dead people. Or people who've moved to another location. And they're trying to get all of those swept out of the out of the uh, out of the uh, voting registration. How dare they? Well, exactly. The left is going ape crap over it, <laughs> and it's more voter suppression. Yeah, this guy. It's it's, <sighs> it's so obvious what they're up to here. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just uh, it absolutely anyway, is. Kudos to uh, Cinema and Mansion for staying strong on this so far. The second ad, titled Thumbs Down, hits Cinema for her vote against the $15 federal minimum wage in March. Mm-hmm. Kirsten Cinema <laughs> is failing us. Wait. Instead of voting for a living wage, she chose to hurt those people who okay. need help most. Oh, this is actually a female narrator. Oh. But that's what she sounds like because she's a... Uh, <laughs> She's a trans. <laughs> awesome. Excuse me, trans it's woman. man. Okay. It is man. Right. Yeah, thank right. You. Yeah, in, fact, in fact, I think it's that person right you, there. You know, the, the footage that they show on that <laughs> ad is uh, cinema. It's this famous thing where she voted down the minimum wage, $15 federal minimum wage, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous. And I should have had them pull this. But she's ready to go for the day. She has her purse, and she walks in there just to vote. <laughs> Thumbs down so she can leave. Mm-hmm. Curtsies. And they they say it's a curtsy. There's a group of people between her and the guy recording the votes. And so she's actually just trying to get his attention. She's like, you know, like, can you see me over here? And it's a curtsy. Even if it is a curtsy, who cares? Right. <laughs> so what? But you're right. It's not. It probably wasn't a curtsy. But, she, you know, if she's messing around and she just curtsies. So what? Right. Who cares? Right? What does that mean? Well... You know what it means when you, when you've got an agenda. It means that you're an elitist and right. you don't want people to make a living wage. Right. But I, she is really good. I, I, I mean, look. I've been surprised. Yeah, she is. Uh, uh, that's the word. She kind of is as advertised. You know, she's a moderate, and I didn't think that was possible because I, I didn't think there were any Democrat moderates left. Well, she's a co-sponsor. She put her name on this for the People Act. Okay. Which, wow. which is stupid. Okay, mm-hmm. so, I mean, you got to take the good with the bad. But she also has principle that the filibuster should not go away. And she's not willing to get there by shortcutting. And, and so I appreciate that. Manchin has shown some giblets lately, too, yeah. which and is nice. That's after Biden gave his wife a, a nice job. Right? Good for him. Yeah. Hope he sticks to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will see. Yeah. Meanwhile, Biden's approval, his job approval rating is down to 52%. I'm surprised it's not about like 2%, but uh, 52% of Americans say they approve of the way Biden's handling his job. 43% disapprove. Uh, so he's still above water by nine points. Mm-hmm. Uh, in May, it was 57% approval and 37% disapprove. So it's come down quite a bit uh, just in a month. When it comes to Biden's handling of the economy, 55% approve? How is that possible? We have <laughs> hyperinflation happening right now. Gas prices are out of control. And he gets high marks on the economy? Wow. They're pulling those dead people we talked about. Yeah. When it comes to his handling of the coronavirus, 61% of Americans approve, 33% disapprove. Uh, in May, it was 64, though. So even that's come down a little bit. Among Americans uh, registered to vote, 52% approve of the way he's handling his job, 43% disapprove. That's the first number we gave you. His drop in overall approval comes from voters saying they're independents. Good. In the June survey, 47% of independents approve. 45% disapprove. Really close. I'm telling you, by the time the midterm rolls around, I think he's going to be in real trouble. Because, frankly, he's a nightmare. And more people are going to see his confusion and his cognitive decline. And maybe we can get the majority back for Republicans in the midterm. Eh, We'll see. Meantime, you know, it's swimsuit weather now. So it's time to enjoy the official candy bar of swimsuit weather. Oh, nice. Built bar. 
Uh, did you know that Bilt Bar, Bilt Bar has nine delicious flavors, plus the occasional limited time flavor? Talking about coconut, coconut, almond, mm. cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie. Oh, man, you're making me hungry. Double chocolate. What do I got here? What salted I... caramel. What do you have I got there? some uh, peanut butter brownie. Mm. And I've got some cookies and cream. All right. And I've got the uh, somewhere in here the salted caramel thing. Really good. Yeah. So you go with caramel instead of caramel? I, I interchange it. I don't Do understand what happens in my brain. Okay. But uh, I'm a big fan of these. We did see that a couple of years ago, we did a map of the yeah. area in dialects, and, and it seems to be by region, whether you say caramel or caramel. Yeah. Uh, maybe get a mixed box of Bilt Bar, and uh, you can try two of two of each of the nine flavors. Bilt Bar Bilt Bars are just the best tasting protein bar by far. And they're healthy, too. So you don't have to feel guilty when you eat these. They're only 130 calories, about 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, 17 grams of protein. And now you can get Bilt Bars uh, even tasty, faster, faster, and and they are tastier than they've ever been. The new URL is Bilt.com. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So go to Bilt.com. Use the promo code PAT15 and you'll save. Wait. Yeah, when that's... you use the promo code PAT15, you save 10%? Yeah. Isn't that good? Isn't that convenient? <laughs> All right. It lines up magically. Okay. I trust so, you. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> go to built.com, use the promo code PAT15 to save 10% off your order. Uh-huh. PAT15 for 10 uh, at Built Bar. All right, built.com. B U I T. B U. I-L-T dot com. Pat Gray. Unleashed. That confused me for a second. Yep. Okay. I will say that I confirmed that with mm-hmm. sales yesterday. So it's Pat 15 for 10%. At Bill. <laughs> the numbers com. don't lie! Thank you. I, I can show you the email chain. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Speaking of the filibuster... And the hypocrisy surrounding the filibuster. You know, Obama is uh, babbling about how it's unnecessary and uh, they're obstructing <laughs> the progress it's and a, all that nonsense. It's a Jim Crow relic now. Jim Crow relic. <laughs> wow. Stop! Is it? Uh, well, here's how he felt about that Jim Crow relic in 2005. But the American people sent us here to be their voice. They understand that those voices can at times become loud and argumentative, but they also hope that we can disagree without being disagreeable. And at the end of the day, they expect both parties to work together to get the people's business done. What they don't expect Mm. is for one party, be Mm. it Republican or Democrat, to change the rules in the middle of the game so that they can make all the decisions (laughs) while the other party is told to sit down and keep quiet. Oh! Wow! Okay. Wait, what? American people right. want less partisanship in this town, but everyone in this chamber knows that if the majority chooses to end the filibuster, mm-hmm. if they choose to change the rules and put an end to democratic debate, then the fighting and the bitterness and the gridlock will only get worse. <laughs> I understand that Republicans are getting a lot of pressure to do this from factions outside the chamber. Chamber. But we need to rise above the ends justify the means mentality because we're here to answer to the people, all of the people, not just the ones that are wearing our particular party label. (laughs) How do you make that statement? You know you've made that (laughs) statement in the past. You stood there in front of everybody in the Senate chamber and you said those words and now all of a sudden the filibuster is evil and you can change the game in the middle. How do they do that? I mean, and that guy right there, who just said what he said back there in 2005, is now calling the filibuster, quote, a Uh, Jim Crow relic. Good gosh. How is it that no reporters say to him, Mr. Obama, uh, in 2005, you said, and then you, you quote him, and then get him to respond to that. How do, how do you defend that? There's just no way you can. And you don't There's have to. no way. Because they're not going to ask him that. No, they're not going to. That's true. 
But it would sure be interesting because I would love to have I mean, the answer to that. Everything he said Jeez. verbatim is what's happening today. Exactly. Right down to the, well, there's some uh, conservative groups. Well, mm-hmm. today it's progressive groups doing that to cinema in Arizona. I mean, right. everything he said, just flip it. Exactly. <laughs> God. It's embarrassing. Or it should be, but they have no shame. No shame. Uh, Russell in Texas, you're on the blaze. Hi. Hey, Pat. Hey. Um. I just thought I'd call in. I was watching the news last night. Okay. Uh, Channel 8, ABC Dallas, uh-huh. of all towns. Of all towns. And, yeah, pretty much a, mm-hmm. a uh, what do you call him, a ponytail-wearing professor. Okay. I mean, there was no proof whatsoever of uh, CRT being taught. And oh My gosh. It just blew me away. You yeah, know how, I, I love that. I love the ta- that tactic because that's that, that's becoming more and more prevalent. Ah, they're not ta- they're not teaching critical race theory because more and more people are realizing what critical race theory is, and so they're shocked that it's being taught in school systems. So now the tactic is well, just deny it's being taught. That's all. Right, and the, and the DCCC, I guess, is paying. <laughs> well, you know what's going on. I don't have to tell you. I, I have something important to tell you. Uh, all right. I got one more other thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> but I love the donkey laugh. I think y'all need to come up with a like a visual meme of a uh, donkey laughing and mm-hmm. throwing barrels of Weight Watchers down at Jeffy. I think that'd be hilarious. Um, <laughs> Keith, get to work uh, on that right now. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> He's and, on it. Uh, Keith, I love your podcast with uh, <laughs> Thor, man. That was great. Oh, the Brad Thor podcast. That was a great conversation. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Appreciate man. it. At the Mike Show dot com. Appreciate it. When man. did that drop? Is that the latest? Story? That's the latest one. Yep. Dropped uh, Thursday night last week. What book is he uh, pimping right now? Um, it's uh, Ice uh, Black Ice. It's his twentieth book in the series, and he talks about uh, uh, how how many more that are coming. And uh, we talked about politics and if he's ever gonna make that run for president. Oh, yeah. Because remember, remember he huh. was here. Uh huh. And uh, I took some pictures of him with Thor's hammer <laughs> in the Oval Office when we had the set. We talked about that because remember he flirted with a run. Yeah. So uh, did he admit to any uh, ambition in that direction? Um, mm, mm. You have to check it out because okay. uh, you All know right. it's a podcast at the Mike Show dot com oh, at the Mike Show dot com. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, he hasn't completely ruled it out, but uh, I don't know that it's going to be for Anytime the soon. presidency necessarily. Oh yeah, that's probably not the place yeah. to start. Mm-hmm. Hey, so I'm a sci-fi writer. And now I want to be president. Of course, we had a guy who was a, you know, game show host, <laughs> kind of, yeah. or at least a reality TV host. Yeah, and he became president. So stranger things have apparently happened. Speaking of uh, Trump, he uh, he lost the straw poll to uh, Ron DeSantis right. recently at the uh, Western Conservative Conference, and so now I'm starting to think. Maybe the moment, momentum is switching from him now a little mm-hmm. bit to people who are really in the game right now, like DeSantis. It does sound like the base is spoken, and they're saying that, look, DeSantis is probably more electable than you. Would, would, would you get that? I mean, I'm extrapolating yeah, that out, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it just seems like it, it would, and careful what you wish for, but it just seems like, on the surface at least, that uh, DeSantis would have an easier time in a general than maybe a Trump? Yeah, because he doesn't have some of the baggage that mm-hmm. President Trump has. I'm and not saying it's fair. Yeah, it's I'm not, just yeah, saying right. reality. Right. And the press will just yeah. uh, continue to bludgeon him, continue to lie about him, and they can make some of those lies stick because they just keep repeating them. It just I mean, doesn't matter to him. And even the far-left press has admitted that DeSantis, um, the pathway he chose in defeating COVID in the state of Florida, it worked. All right, you, you you were right about opening up mm-hmm. everything and uh, mm-hmm. relaxing all the restrictions. So he at least has that going for him. Sure does. By the way, color-coded bracelets uh, can gauge COVID-19 social interaction comfort levels. If you're comfortable uh, with people coming up to you and, I don't what? know, tongue-kissing you, uh, then then you get a... Uh, <laughs> Wait. You get a certain kind of bracelet. Wait, what color is the tongue kissing one? Uh, I think the tongue kissing one is green. So come tongue kiss me. <laughs> Wait, that's green. You wear a green it's bracelet. Just, and I don't know. That's what it says. <laughs> it's not. 
Green oh. means the wearers are comfortable with hugs and high fives. Yellow signals elbow bump only. <laughs> and red is for stay stay away from me. <laughs> Just keep away. Yeah. Let's do that so, one. I'll take a red. I'll just wear a red one everywhere, please. As we continue to experience relaxed restrictions and updated (laughs) recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control, uh, vaccines, face covering, social distancing, and so on, we realized there would be different comfort levels with these changes (laughs) among our team and members and shoppers. Uh, Yeah, it's interesting because even though people can and they've been fully vaccinated and the store tells them they don't have to, they still do it. They still do it. There was an article a few months ago that some people are not going to want to give up the mask. And I thought, eh, please, who, who's not going to want to stop wearing this? Oh, a lot of people. Oh, it's a thing. It's a thing. In fact, I was outside of the uh, DFW airport just the other day and I saw a family, presumably from Seattle. One of the kids <laughs> had a Seahawks jersey on mm-hmm. and the entire family of four in the sweltering Dallas heat, was walking outside, and all four in this family had their masks on. Dummies. And, and I, it, I just concluded they've got to be from yeah. Seattle. And, and they just love on. it now. They love it. <laughs> they lo- wear, you know what you should yeah. do is wear the mask the rest of your stinking life. No matter what happens, if they give you the all clear, there's no more disease. We've eradicated everything. Just keep wearing your mask. Well, a lot of people that are pro-vaccine like to say, well, we shouldn't have to pay for your health care if you get COVID-19 because you didn't want the vaccine. Okay, well, you know what? We shouldn't have to pay for all of the lung issues mm-hmm. and breathing problems you're going to have for the rest of your life because you won't take off the damn mask. Right. And because of those filthy masks, we uh, those Florida parents sent a bunch of masks into uh, University of Florida lab. Ugh. They found all kinds of crap on there. E. coli. Uh, Fecal matter Tuberculosis. Fecal, yeah, oh, fecal matter. Gosh, I mean, there was grossness all over it, and they, they just been washed, or they were brand new, brand new from that, well, that 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 airtight, <laughs> um, secure <laughs> yeah, the Indonesian place where they're manufacturing. <laughs> yeah, these. yeah, the place in India where they. Uh, Let's take a look at that very, place, just so you're. Yeah, you should be really comfortable. Look at with there, these masks. huh? You should be completely comfortable. That's with them. a good. Good look. Sterile environment. I These think people is. are painstakingly taking precautions. <laughs> yep. I don't want to hear I it. I mean, nobody is openly pee- peeing on them. Well, while the video was rolling. At least, yeah, right. right. Well, oh, gosh. I mean, that's do- on your face, by the way. Mm-hmm. On your face. Mm-hmm. And this is after them having been washed or they were brand new. Imagine after you've worn them for two or three oh, weeks. Oh, gosh. Jeez, I can't even imagine. From the I don't f- want to know. <laughs> that should be a marketing slogan. From the floor to your face. <laughs> Get your blue mask right here. Oh. <laughs> I, I've never seen this video played by anybody anywhere no, else. No, I know. So I would, I would love for everybody to see that. And tell me I've, that these masks are fine. I've played it for lots of people in life. Because like when I'm not in a store where they have those bracelets, yeah, and I don't have access to to one of those, the red, the, yellow, and green, yeah, yeah, and I just I just hold up the the video, mm-hmm. and and that kind of kills the conversation, <laughs> and then they move on, and they realize that I'm not someone they want to have a conversation with. Sure, <clears throat> yeah. But I told you I went to the hospital that one time, and I put they they literally had an armed guard standing at the entrance of the hospital in Fort Worth, mm-hmm. and you had to put a stupid mask on, and it smelled like feet. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And it took me about 20 and seconds this was to after register. We saw the video. Yeah, it took me about 20 seconds to remember <laughs> that video. And That's it was why. not a good day. That's why it smells like feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, the manufacturers were walking all over it. Huh. Okay. Oh, oh, Makes ah. perfect sense now. <laughs> but you're right. There's some people, a lot of people, that is their safety blanket now. That's yeah. their security blanket, is the mask. Yep. And they can't stand life without it. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter, if you'd like to participate with the show today. Got some tweets here. Uh, Tyler at Relentless Daring Media Productions. Nice. The only thing that Back to the Future Part Two got right was the Cubs winning the World Series in twenty sixteen. Mm. Yeah, they did. They did predict that. Uh, for your information, from Spunker thirteen hundred R. 
Those two senators are not meeting with Biden. They're going to be threatened by Marxist Obama minions yeah. and that have infested the White House. Uh, also from <sighs> Sock Cyber Defense Czar, once they get the FTPA passed, it will ensure a Republican never wins the presidency again. They can't afford to let this one become a missed opportunity. They'll get it through somehow. Yeah. If somebody does manage to squeak through as a Republican... Uh, in 2024, it would I think it would be Ron DeSantis. He's he's doing some amazing things right now, and people are noticing. Uh, you know, he's j- he just signed a bill requiring daily reflective moments of silence in public schools. What do you suppose that's about? It's about installing school prayer again, but they can't <laughs> say it because of the so-called separation of church and state ruling from the Supreme Court in '63, which is just bogus and bizarre uh but pretty pretty powerful some of the things he's doing he's i guess uh you can't interrupt this yeah moment of silence how long will the moment actually be Do one we know? to two minutes one to two so i think it's no less than one no more than two and i think what teachers can't have any kind of input or anything right mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean i don't know are the kids gonna be quiet though it's gonna it's gonna just be it's going to be chaos, I think. But at least, I mean, this is the most you can do, right? Yes, um, pretty much. Right here. I mean, I guess, based on the faulty feeling that you can't pray in school, which is bizarre and stupid. I like it. And not the case. Uh, I like the fact that he is doing something. And he's doing something on a lot of fronts. This guy, you know, it's kind of cynical to say he wants to be president because that sort of infers that he's doing all this only to run for office. And I don't think that's the case. I think he actually has some principles, and he's he's trying to exercise them, which is great. Uh, so it's a good time for Florida right now. Yeah. It is not a good time for New Jersey. Uh, is it ever a good time for New Jersey? No. It's <laughs> like the armpit of the country. Um, but oh, wow. according to a new survey <laughs> from Wallet Hub, it's the most desirable place in America to live. What? This New is Jersey, the dumbest survey ever. What did did they did they uh, did they survey uh, Cardinal Joe Tobin of Newark, <laughs> and that's it? it? It doesn't say. Maybe it was Cardinal Tobin that told him to uh, rig it. Yeah, you find that you find favor. the numbers. <laughs> New Jersey now officially ranks as the best state in America to live. What? Garden State edged out. Get this. Okay. Who was in second place? Uh, probably Florida, right? Yeah. Uh, no. What? Uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> Wait, what the hell? Stop it! This is a lie. Is it Babylon B? Okay, so they got New Jersey, Massachusetts, but who's third? It's Florida gotta, or Texas? Gotta be Texas, right. Florida. South Dakota. Uh, New York. New York. <laughs> Come on. Uh, how is that even po- Now, see, this is just a short little blurb. So I don't oh. know what criteria they use. Yeah, we need to see that. That's bullcrap. I'd love to see the criteria used because New Jersey never wins polls New like Jersey that. New Jersey and New York and Met- that's come where people on. are escaping. Exactly. What? Exactly. Uh, come on. Americans fleeing California. <laughs> Thank you. And New York and New Jersey uh-huh. for Texas and Florida, according to this new study. Um as violent crime surges in liberal metropolitan areas like Los Angeles and New York City, residents are migrating south to red areas, according to a new report by North American Van Lines. And they would know because they're loading you up and taking you where you're going. Despite the 2020 pandemic this year, Americans are following similar moving trends as prior years. Millions of Americans are moving either to start a new job or to uh, move back home. The Indiana-based moving and trucking company said its 2020 migration report. Uh, the company offers long distance and local moving services, of course. The report found that Californians who have opted to leave are largely moving, and this sucks, uh, because they're largely moving to Texas. Mm-hmm. Or north to Idaho, it said. Huh. Wow. Does it say that, really? Yeah, it does. Oh, see. Among states experiencing a large exodus... New York, in particular, New York City, saw the most people leave. The next cities uh, people are leaving are three California cities, Anaheim, San Diego, and Riverside. And then you got Chicago in there, too. Why would you leave San Diego? Why would you ever leave? Well, 
high you're prices. Sick of sick of California. California. Yeah. <laughs> I think you answered your own question. It's a fantastic city, though. Hmm. In addition to New Yorkers, dwellers of three states in particular, New York, Maryland, and California, are fleeing to southern and southeastern states. Wait a minute. I thought New York was one of the most desirable states to live in, Wallet Hub. Huh. Uh, Residents of Pennsylvania and Michigan are also fleeing. Yeah. You know, this is every liberal bastion. They're leaving and going to where conservatives make life bearable and, and try to allow you... Uh, to enjoy your life, become successful in your life, and build yourself a nice lifestyle. It's a dangerous game, but I've got a hope. It's not a prediction. It's a hope that the majority of people that are leaving the blue states have common sense and that they're going to... The majority, not not generally. If, mm-hmm. if they're leaving on their own, because COVID really... Ha- it's shaken a lot of people loose. And now they're nomads, basically. And they're like, I can go anywhere now, right? I have common mm-hmm. sense, and I'm going to go live in a red state. Now, corporations that move, that's a different story, and they are ruining towns like Plano. Yeah. But but, but my, my hope is that by the 2030 census, there's been such a shift from these blue states to these red states from people that have common sense that woke up during COVID and like, I got to get out of here. I can work from home and not pay you know ridiculous amounts of taxes. Mm-hmm. Maybe it helps the red states as far as number of representatives and it drains these blue states. I don't know. Like I said, I'm hoping it's not a prediction, <laughs> but I'm hoping the 2030 census Mm-hmm. really reflects this shift to places like Texas and Florida in a good way. Well, the 2020 census did. Yeah, but uh, then COVID hit, yeah. and and now I think it's going to be even much, much more dramatic in 2030. Now, we've got some uh, lessons learned from California's pot industry bailout. I didn't realize that. Wait, we're already bailing they, out pot? They bailed out the pot industry in California. Phew, that was a close one. Good. <laughs> Where are you going to get your joints if the pot industry closes down? Hmm? Oh, hold on. Can I just say that I was in Boise 20 years ago, and you could tell that it was going to become the next little California. Mm-hmm. And when we crossed the border into Oregon, there's a little town, Ontario, Oregon. And I remember there was like hardly anything there. This time, when I when I looked on the map as we were going over into Oregon this 20 years later, it's all these pot dispensaries all these places right on the border there Where it's legal yeah other, other across the border from idaho so but now we're bailing out yeah oh, yeah okay because getting cannabis regulations wrong comes at a high cost california's hundred million dollar fund to help floundering marijuana businesses <laughs> has made that clear the uh largest state earmarked money last week to aid companies that are struggling financially in large part because bureaucratic delays and missteps blah 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 uh but Yes, the pot industry in California has received a hundred million dollars as a bailout for them. How does California have the money for this? They don't have money for the lights to stay on. That's just amazing. Wow. Uh, California has a fifteen percent tax on legal marijuana, and they've been that's been blamed for pushing consumers to the illicit market. It's clear that (laughs) much more has gone wrong. Legalization, which began in twenty sixteen, has been messy with rules varying by city and by county. The process has also been slow and expensive. Uh, so that's really sad for the pot industry. I'm I'm heartbroken. Uh, I think these states that legalized it have encountered unintended consequences like they always do. You know, and so you're seeing that in Washington, Oregon. Where's the other one that just, I think California has decriminalized it. A lot of states have. Yeah. So to one degree you, or another. If you want to recreationally use it, it's now just as legal as, as alcohol or tobacco. So thank goodness California <laughs> bailed out their great marijuana industry. You'd hate to see that go to pot. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, <laughs> you know, boy, uh, this marijuana industry is just going to pot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh, uh, get it? My, yeah, it's gone to pot. Here are, <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. Yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, here's yeah. the, uh, mm-hmm. here's where it's legal. The dark, the really dark states. Can you see that? Oh, that's way more than that's I thought. legal. Uh, now, wow. hang on a second. Um, Wow. Decriminalized, medical and decriminalized, any shade of green, really. So the only places where it's completely not legal, uh, oh, fully illegal, Idaho, Wyoming, Kansas, Tennessee, South Carolina. So 45 of the 50 
are legal so to that, one but degree. So that includes or not. medical right. marijuana, Where which Utah just passed. Mm. Um, in fact, my church got church leaders got behind it, and that's what pushed it over the edge. Oh, I bet it did. Because you know we've always believed that that's what herbs like that are for. Sure, they're for medicinal purposes. Tobacco is for for medicinal purposes, not to be smoked. Uh, but I think it's you place it on bruises or something on. And oh wow! It's, it's got healing properties. A little cannabis action. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I, uh-huh. There, uh huh. Yeah. There there's so many benefits to it, and that CBD element, absolutely. There's 18 states now where it's just completely legalized, but there's so many more where it's just like they don't even enforce it. It's just decriminalized. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But uh, th- th- you're absolutely right. The marijuana plant. Has a lot of health benefits. Yeah, absolutely, it does. And I'm yeah, I, I'm actually glad to see that uh, that your church did that. Yeah, I think people were shocked, but you know that's its natural use. So why would they oppose that? Uh, if it can help people, why would you oppose it? I, what they don't want is for it to be abused. Sure. And, and that's the other kind of use that you, when you roll it into a joint and smoke it because you're trying to get high. I, I will say that I had a relative who was a uh, big-time Southern Baptist, big-time against uh, any kind of legalization of marijuana whatsoever, even to the medicinal uh, angle. Oh, wow. He uh, passed mm-hmm. away from cancer, mm. and it was a really rough exit for him. And he actually told me privately, he said, you know, I was against any kind of marijuana. It is the only thing that brought me relief. Oh and wow! My, as as he so was he dying, did take it. yeah. So he took it at, at the, the end, end, and he was telling me how that was the only thing that brought me relief. And and coming mm-hmm. from him, if you know him, a very fundamental guy, yeah, that's saying a lot. Yeah, there's there's problems with other forms of painkillers, and apparently, you know, the properties in uh, cannabis really can help. You know, they they settle your stomach, all kinds of different things that it can do, and. So why not use it for that purpose? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm and, a big fan of Dr. Monroe's CBD. Actually, <laughs> it comes in all forms, and it's uh, it, it's got is lotions. It an oil? It's all sorts of products. Yeah. yeah, and and like the lotions. Like, remember when I had that issue with my leg after my surgery? Mm-hmm. It's seriously the CBD did the trick. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. All right, speaking of pain, let me tell you about another way to calm down your pain, and that's with Omega XL. This is something else that's all natural. All natural. You got to love it. I love it. And it's not something you're going to get addicted to uh, or your body becomes dependent upon because it's all natural. It comes from the pristine waters around New Zealand. It's those omega fatty acids. And once it builds up in your system, you start to feel that relief. And after a couple of weeks, two to three weeks, uh, the pain is gone give it a try see if it works for you this can be life-changing it's not some johnny come lately thing either it's backed by 35 years of clinical research so they really know what they're doing omega xl let's get you started today when you go to omega xl and order one bottle you'll get a second bottle free visit omega xl.com slash pat that's omega xl.com slash pat or call 800 844 4888. Pat Gray Unleashed. Ah, uh, yes. Triple Eight, 933 We already played the Barack Obama yeah. li- f- filibuster thing, right? Mm hmm. Uh, time goes by so quickly. I can't, yeah. I can't keep track of what's going on today. <laughs> uh, we finally had an NFL football player, an active football player in the NFL right now, who has come out as homosexual. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's finally happened. And I only got 13 news yeah. alerts on my phone yesterday about it. Oh, it's. I didn't know I had that many news and sports apps available on my phone, but yes. Well, everybody had to celebrate. You know, because, yay! Yes. He likes a certain kind of sex. I'm so glad! Yeah! Nice. Yay! <laughs> good. That's All good. right. That's real good. So now, uh, the game will be much better. If you were bored with the NFL before, mm-hmm. you're going to love it now. Yeah. Because you know Carl Nassib is uh, is gay. Mm-hmm. It only took him three weeks into Pride Month to do this? Yeah, where, yeah. Where were you on June 1st, bro? Well, he talks about it. Oh, we, does he? Yeah, he okay. talks about it. Here, here he is uh, coming out. Oh, 
What's up, people? I'm Carl oh, hey. Massive. I'm at my house here in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Just want to take a quick moment to say that I'm gay. I've been oh. meaning to do this for a while now, but uh -huh. I finally feel comfortable enough to get it off my chest. Good. Um, Good. I really have the best life. I got the best family, friends, mm -hmm. and job a guy could ask for. That's nice. Um, I'm a pretty private person, so I hope you guys know that I'm really not doing this for attention. Um, I just think that representation and visibility are so important. Um, I actually hope that like one day videos like this and the whole coming out process are just not necessary. Um, are they necessary right now? But until then, you know, I'm going to do my best and do my part to cultivate a culture that's accepting, right. that's compassionate. Okay, good. And I'm going to start by donating $100,000 to the Trevor Project. There you go. They're an incredible organization. They're the number one suicide prevention service for mm. LGBTQ youth in America. You and they're truly doing Q incredible and things. I and I'm very excited to be out. a part of it, to help in any way that I can. Mm -hmm. And I'm really pumped to see what the future holds. Uh, Me that's too. all I have for you guys. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a great day. Work hard. I mean, as announcements like that go. That is as subdued as you can get, right? Yeah, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. And uh, But, you know, when are the players, has it, have any of the players come out as heterosexuals? Uh, I don't think so. Now, we can assume they are uh, yes, uh, based name, on the fact that they have girls as yeah. wives. His name is uh, Joe Namath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, he has. But... Things are changing, right. boy. Things are changing, even in, in the NFL. On the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, Hello. Carl Nassib's coming out announcement was so popular that the Las Vegas Raiders decided to reach out to more players with oh. alternate lifestyles. Oh, wow. Okay. They have searched free agency for a trans quarterback. And they have found two offensive linemen from the runway of a drag queen show for six-year-olds. Oh, wow. This is the new National Football League. And thank you for being here with us. 888-900-3393. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. <clears throat> where Jimmy Dimples tweets... <laughs> Oh, no. Concerning the best places to live in America. Oh, New Jersey, of course. You sure you're not reading that best state to live in list upside down? Oh, <laughs> that, is that what it was? That might be the problem. Yeah, you just flip it around. New Jersey, Massachusetts, okay. New York. <laughs> uh, from Tyler. I believe the criteria for that survey was paid for by the New Jersey <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> from YT White Man. Uh, I can't wait for all the NFL pregame shows to start now. <laughs> oh, they're going to be harping on this. Oh, there's going to be introspective. There's going to be a serious, uh, mm. uh, you know, one of those, you know, serious music. And mm -hmm. James Brown's going to sit down with him. And so mm -hmm. walk us through <laughs> your discovery. When did you decide to come out? And what, what was the decision? Walk us through your decision process. Oh, no, Pat. Oh, no, Patrick. Their first game is Monday Night Football. Wow. The Raiders. Get ready. ESPN. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. ABC. Oh, they're oh, going to be. Imagine? Oh, get it'll, ready for that. It'll be a celebration of outness. <laughs> for sure. It will. And, it, you know, it does bring up interesting aspects that I guess you can't be uncomfortable with any of it. Hmm. Right? You can't be. Uh, reticent or hesitant or uncomfortable in any way. You must embrace it fully and completely and then promote it and say that we, you know, every NFL team should have gay members, uh, gay football players. And in, in fact, maybe we all should be gay. That mm. should be your attitude now, right? I'd make the locker room a more comfortable place. It then. would. If, yeah, if it they're would. they're all in the same boat. No. Uh, it's just... Uh, it's just and, and seriously, like, are you going to be considered uh, hateful if you request that your locker, where you change and you oh, get fully yeah. naked, is is you don't want to be the... next to him? Yeah, can I can I go over there? I wonder if they'd throw you off the team for that. I bet they would. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I bet you'd be gone. They'd oh, trade you or or just flat out release you. Okay, so what if what if one of these teams? Um, what if, what if one of these teams hired that excellent kicker, Sarah Fuller, right? Yeah. I mean, because she's incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously. Best uh, kicker of all time. She's going to be in the, it's inevitable. Right. She'll be in the NFL. Yes. What if her locker were next to all the other players? Would that be a problem? Would that be a problem with everybody, your spouse? Everybody's naked in there and that's fine. 
Here we are. Because you do have that dynamic now. Sure. Right? It's like, okay, now a sexual aspect has entered the locker room. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying that, that, that this guy, I swear I saw his name 400 times yesterday. Uh, what's his name? Carl Nassib. Thank you. I'm not saying that he's going to be sitting there, you know, no, staring I, or checking right. it. It's just the simple fact that he enjoys what he's surrounded by. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, that's just that's just his biology, right? Yes. So if you don't want to be right next to him, is, are you a hateful hate monger who mongers in, in, in hate. hate? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And again, it's just the whole focus on it and uh, the identifying as that that's that's what you identify as if you're in the lgbtqia2 plus community you identify as one of those letters and that's how you want to be known which is to me why are we doing that why i don't care what you do in your bedroom i really don't care honestly i i seriously don't care and i don't want to know i don't want to know what tom brady's doing in his bedroom with giselle bunchen if it's none of my business, and uh, and none of us need to know. So, w- would it be appropriate for um, a heterosexual male to be naked in a locker room surrounded by third? Oh, I guess this case, what fifty three men, fifty mm-hmm. fifty three women that you assume are straight. Mm-hmm. I mean, just. Uh, yeah, I don't understand why that would be a bad thing to just want to, you know, kind of separate yourself a little bit there. Well, you can't. You just can't. It's just one of those things. And that's why it doesn't make any sense either that they can be proud of their identity as a sexual being, but heteros can't. You know, like we devote not just a day to gay pride, not a week, an entire month for your sexuality. For your sexual preference. It's a strange thing. What a weird world we live in. Um, And by the way, Sesame Street now, since there's nothing wrong with it, uh, right? Right. Uh, They've introduced two gay dads. All right. And they're the gay dad's daughter for their family day episode. The first married gay couple to appear on Sesame Street. There they are. Isn't that that lovely? That's wonderful. Look at that. It's so cute. That's that's wonderful. Hanging out there on the old Sesame Street. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they're you know telling our children about gayness, I guess, and uh, mm-hmm. it's wonderful. Yeah, and you you can't have a problem with that. Oh, good. Sesame Street's gonna teach my children now about sexual preferences. Sure are. Hmm. Sure are. Hmm. And I'm not supposed to be concerned about that at all. No. Huh. What do you mean? Why would you be concerned? Right. Perfectly. What are you, what are you nah, I, suggesting with I'm that? I'm not suggesting anything. You better not of course. be. I'm not. I am okay. not. Believe me. I'm. Here's my problem. Okay, what's your problem? Why didn't it happen a long time ago? Why did they wait so long? Why was Sesame Street so hateful for mm-hmm. the first 51 years of their existence? Right. Why? Where's this been? Why didn't they have it day one? Mm. Why? Day one. Episode one. So I guess the way uh, this broke into uh, Sesame Street's um, broadcast was after some hugs, Nina excitedly says, okay, everybody, everybody, Mm. I want you to meet my brother, Dave. Okay. His husband, Frank. All right. And my Sabrina, which is niece, Maya. Oh. Oh, wow. From there, it's your garden variety, Sesame Street stuff. But toward the end of the episode, Frank tells the group that there's all kinds of different families. Yeah, there are. But what makes us a family is that we love each other. I knew the word love was coming. Love. I knew it. Love. Love is love. Love is love. Love is the drug I was thinking of. Oh. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm lost. What what, what song are we on? (laughs) I can't remember, actually. Hold on. Now, now, now. Yeah, Google it. Love, Love is, is the, the drug, drug I was thinking of. Thinking of. And oh. it is survey set. Oh, Roxy Music. Love Roxy is the music. drug. Okay. Wow. All right, there you go. 1975. Pretty hip reference then if it's Roxy Music, right? A really hip reference if it's a 40-year-old one. <laughs>
<laughs> what? Well, what? <laughs> what was that? 50, almost Wait, 50. Wait, are you calling oh, me old? Goodness, Wait, gracious. what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, huh. so, um, so that's neat, right? We're making progress. <laughs> so that's neat. Right. It's a really good word for it. It's neat. It is. I mean... I mean Special. Being gay is a thing. It's just, it's a thing. Okay? Right. Mm-hmm. You can be gay. And you can be a great person and be gay. But it's in a kid's show where I have to have this discussion, I have to have this mm-hmm. conversation with my child at age three while they're trying to learn their ABCs. Yeah. Mm. No, I don't want to. We can have this discussion. I just don't want to have it right now. I don't want to have any kind of sexual related discussion with my child just that is of kids. Sesame Street age. Right. I mean, we have to go through that all, uh, all of that kind of stuff early enough as it is. Now, you know, you're going to have your, put your two year old in front of Sesame Street and they get to have all that planted in their brains and then you get to explain it to them then i I mean it's but if you if you don't like it i guess you just don't watch sesame street well what if what if what if you're a taxpayer and say uh you don't like (laughs) well then what i have to say to you is tough funding those shows with tough wait what do you mean (laughs) what if i can i put my tax dollars into defense no nope they're going to sesame can i put it into infrastructure which is Uh uh-uh well Everything, including Sesame Street. Mm-hmm. Sesame Street is infrastructure. Oh, there's your bumper sticker. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness! Someone <laughs> on the left, start printing them now. Print it up. Sesame Street is infrastructure. That that will be their rallying cry when this thing goes to the mat. Yeah, I don't think it's going to the mat anymore, though. You well, know, we're just getting infrastructure money. Yeah, and we're we're just accepting all of this stuff being taught to our kids. We don't even have a problem with that anymore. Just go ahead and indoctrinate my kids in whatever you want to do. I Yeah. Whatever you want them to feel, just take, let them know. Just, just take, take them. them. Whatever. Take them. At what? this point, I'm so tired. Just whatever. Here. Here's the kids. Just, <laughs> yep. You know what? Send me a picture, a postcard. Well, every... that, sadly, is where we are. And And if you're not there, then you need to make sure that your kids aren't watching Sesame Street. Right? That's yeah. the only other alternative, really, because Sesame Street's not going to stop doing this. They're proud of the fact that they're progressive and liberal and always have been. And it doesn't make us bad people that we don't want our kids no, to doesn't. learn this right this moment. Right. These are all discussions that you're going to have with your children at some point. Uh, but there's a time and a place there's for There's a it. time and a place. And when I, my kid is trying to learn the, the, letter to, the letter of the day and the number of the day or whatever the heck they do over there. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They don't need to be going, wait, what's going on here? What's the deal <laughs> yeah, with the two right. dudes and the kid? Uh-huh. What's up? Right. <sighs> Whatever, man. Just it's take the world. kids. Just take them. Just take them. Uh, I'm Because I'm worn out. I'm mm. done trying to fight you off. Just take the kids. Sadly, that's where a lot of people are. <clears throat> uh, but now, the American Medical Association says sex should be removed as a legal designation on the public part of birth certificates. <laughs> <laughs> just when you think we've covered all the ground yeah man. no no there's still more there's still more still more okay what now well requiring it keith can lead to discrimination and unnecessary burdens on individuals whose current gender identity does not align with their designation at birth namely when they register for school or sports adopt get married or request personal records so you just remove it and don't don't put any kind of gender or sex on there. All right, good. Right? Good. Will that make you happy? No. We're all just... No. There's going to be more. Oh, no. What now? Assigning sex using binary variables in <laughs> the public portion what? of the birth certificate fails to recognize the medical spectrum of gender identity. <clears throat> oh. Okay. And it can be used to discriminate. Jeremy Toller, an MD... And a delegate from GLMA, the Health Professionals Advancing LGBTQ Equality and Transgender, Gender Non-Binary, and Individuals with Differences in Sex Development, can be placed at a disadvantage by the sex label on the birth certificate. Okay, so in other words, their check to the AMA cleared in time for the press release. And yep. so they got that included. Okay, good. good. We unfortunately still live in a world where it's unsafe in many cases for one's gender to vary from the sex assigned at birth. Got it. Mix it into a storyline on Sesame Street for next month. Whatever. Let that sink in for a second, though. Okay. We unfortunately still 
live in a world where it's unsafe in many cases for one's gender <clears throat> to vary from the sex assigned at birth. It's only been like two, three, five years. Oh, minutes. I thought you were going to go with minutes. Since we've had this incredible onslaught of How? gender nonconformity, and we're already supposed to be comfortable with it. How is it that's dangerous, though? That's incredible. Because that's insinuating that, 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 that reader... Is there anybody in this audience that that has been violent towards somebody that is trans? And if so, you need to be behind bars. Yeah. How is this dangerous? I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't. Maybe dangerous in that if you know that they were a, a male at birth mm -hmm. and now they're trying to compete in female sports, you might not want them to because that's on their on their birth certificate. Yeah. The gender assigned at birth. <laughs> But that's not the gender they okay. are, so you could keep them out of sports. So let's say you have a credit card, right? Yeah. And, and, I mean. Oh, and I've switched genders. Yeah. Or, or so, you just want to go by a different name. Just you feel uh -huh. like uh, like your name's Pat, but you feel like a. Uh, I was fortunate enough uh, to <laughs> have, uh, have. Oh, that works. Parents with foresight enough oh, to give God. me a generic name like that that okay. could go either way. All right. No, it's kind of going to go with like the prince symbol or something <laughs> like that. You know, like what if you just, what if you want to go that way? I'll just say like, what if you, what if you but feel what, like something different when yeah. you go to make purchases and stuff? And you have a uh, MasterCard that says. Oh, that's oddly specific. You're. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Is there. What, well, is I'm there... just saying that what if you look like. Uh, a man, whoa! But careful. you've got a female name. Whoa! What? Or vice versa? Don't be judging books uh, right, by their I know. cover. That's true. <laughs> uh, how would how would you handle that? How would you? Let's we, see. We need some guidance for Mastercard. Slow motion, serious music. Oh, this is gonna get real. Anything slow motion? Remember, for transgender people. Oh no! Right. <clears throat> a secure payment. <clears throat> doesn't mean protecting yourself oh, from white... someone buying sneakers with your card. White guy at the cash no. register is mad. If you're transgender, oh. a secure payment means paying for something without being judged. What? Right. Oh, oh Questioned. My. Disrespected. Oh, uh, got it. Humiliated. Harassed. Even assaulted. Simply Does because the name on your card doesn't because match of how the... you identify. <laughs> The name on your card. This is about more than just oh, keeping the card safe. They're both happy. Uh, it's about keeping us. He, safe. They had an open-minded. They clerk. had a true name. They had a moment. By Mastercard. The clerk the and the first customer. card that allows you to display your chosen name. Oh, your cho because your chosen that's who you name. Really are. Okay. Good. Good. Fraud anybody? Hmm. That was fun. And when's the last time you've handed your credit card to a cashier? They always have you put it in the. <laughs> Right. Well, the slot, and, and well, then and, you don't have the dramatic moment where their eyes true. meet. That's true. Eyes meet. He approves. Because, uh, I love. And you have that beautiful moment between you where, yeah, good and job. You, you see good job, guy, Susie. The guy is in the in in the <laughs> convenience store, and he's doing that slow motion walk because you know when you're in a convenience well, he's store, scared. he's scared. Mm -hmm. Got that dramatic turn, and mm -hmm. then he gets up, and of course, it's a white guy. Of course, it's it is. a white guy at the cash register, and you're leery of him because he's white and, and he's a racist. And because we know what the number one threat uh, to right. America is right now, it's white supremacy. Whiteies, and you're like, and oh no! So he's this thinking, guy going to kill me. I, my name on my card is Debbie, and is he going to say something about that? And of I, course, their eyes meet, I, I, and he I, doesn't. He I got news anything. for you. There's no <laughs> clerk. There's no cashier in America. <laughs> <laughs> that's looking at your card in your face and, and matching up. They're like, whatever. Just run it in the deal here. Yeah, okay. Especially since, as you mentioned, you just push it in the slot. Right. You got the chip. You need to put it all in the slot. They don't even know what <laughs> yeah. your name is. I they know. don't care. You don't have to sign anything anymore. Those <sighs> are That's a relic from the past. Right. And like, Stupid. Like I was at a, a doctor's office the other day, and like the machine was all messed up. It wasn't, it wasn't accepting. Did they take my card? Did they look at it? They go, oh my gosh, what's going on over there? No, they're like, oh, that thing's acting up again. Here, let me reset it. Never touched my card. Never did anything. For all they know, I could have broken the machine because mm -hmm. I was stealing from them. They're not going to... Mm. 
Yeah. The only people that's that, a moment that, that nobody's going to have together. Right yeah. <laughs> even if you write on the, remember how you used to put check ID uh-huh. on the back of your credit card because you were trying to eliminate mm-hmm. fraud if, if it got stolen or whatever. Mm-hmm. That you don't even get to that point anymore where the cashier is looking at that. The only person looking at you and comparing you to anything is TSA. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's that's the only place. Mm-hmm. So now now we're getting. Oh my gosh! Here come the TSA. True name. Oh dear lord! Here we go. It's happening. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Let me take a minute and tell you about keeps. You got a million reasons to be stressed out these days. Yeah. Uh, stressing about your male pattern baldness and receding hairline. That doesn't have to be one of the things you're stressing about. The good news is keeps can help. Keeps offers the same doctor recommended, FDA approved hair loss treatment. But they have the generic versions, so you only pay about half the cost. It's a great deal. And one more thing you're going to love about Keeps, you can you can do everything online. You don't have to go to the doctor's office. You don't have to go to the pharmacy. Answer a few easy questions, snap some pictures of your hair, and then a licensed doctor reviews your information and recommends the right hair loss treatment for you. It's just that easy. Then it's shipped to your door. So don't make trips to your doctor and then the drugstore. When you can just do it all online with Keeps. And we'll get you started with this special g- discount, too. Go to K-E-E-P-S, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Pat for 50% off your first order. That's Keeps dot com slash Pat for 50% off. Keeps dot com slash Pat. Only. Yeah? What? Hmm? And? That's weird that she would just leave you hanging yeah. like that. It's Pat Gray. Now that she's got your attention what? and you've responded, yeah. this is where she would what? continue her thought. Yeah. Is on now. Talks now. Is fabulous. Right. Uh, nah, that's Pat not. Pat Gray. Yeah, I don't think she would say And? This is fabulous. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. 93 Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter where uh, President Zoe Biden <laughs> tweets, I'm so private, and therefore, I wanted to make sure the world knows. That's the announcement of uh, Carl Nassib. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did say he's he's a private person, mm-hmm. and so that's why he's told us now what kind of sex he prefers. Uh-huh. So, with that knowledge, it, it's obviously going to make your day better. Right? right now, you can move on with yeah. your life. Yeah, like if you were losing sleep a couple mm-hmm. nights ago about Carl Nassib's. Uh, no, just, preference. no, no, just in general. Like if you had mm. insomnia or just something, okay. whatever. You know, you're not getting enough rest. This was the cure. Now you can put your mind at ease. All right. When you lay down tonight, knowing that Carl Nassim is. Well, that was my thing. I was wondering, it, it, what? Who does he like to, you know, get into bed with? Hmm. I was thinking that uh, at the last Raiders game. Oh, really? Uh, last year. Yeah. I thought Carl Nassim. Hmm. Huh. I wonder was, who he has sex with. You're like, that's a good tackle. <laughs> You know what? I wonder. You know, I, yeah. Huh. Huh. And and now I know. Now. So, <clears throat> yeah. It's uh it's better. <laughs> it's the world is better. <laughs> yeah, think about that. The world is so much better now better. than it was 24 hours <clears throat> ago because of Cronus. Yep. And again. Hmm. Okay, it's f- fine. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't care what Carl does in his bedroom. Or with whom he does it. Thank you. I really don't. Because I don't know about you, but I wasn't thinking about that 24 hours ago. No. And all these nou- announcements then just start all this process. And I just, I don't know that it's necessary. He he said he wants a world where it's not necessary. I think we live in that world right now. It's not necessary. <laughs> Thank you. From Bradley S. Collins. I'm a pretty private person. <laughs> That's why I'm publishing this announcement on the World Wide Web (laughs) to let everybody know about some of the most intimate details of my life and trumpet the donation I'm making. Yeah. You could have privately donated, right? Yep. You could have just drawn attention to the foundation without saying, oh, and by the way, Uh Uh I uh, just dropped a hundred grand on the, what you call it, site. (laughs) Beth tweets, Pride Month. Here's my view. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Gay folks are no more special than straight people. <gasps> How dare you say that? Oh, the feds are headed to oh. you right now. How dare you? Beth, come on. How dare you? Mm. How dare you? That's a triple on the how dare you. Beth, mm. that's a triple. 
Uh, gay folks are no more sp- special than straight people. Why do you need a month to celebrate your sexuality? <laughs> <laughs> what a hater! Yeah. If you don't like it, that means you hate. Yeah. So change your ways, Beth. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. Some tweets here. Uh, chitty Chitty Fang Fang. <laughs> so if I add my true name, it's of course the Van, uh, MasterCard commercial. Oh, if yeah. I add my true name to my credit card, does that absolve my legal name from this debt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, that's my <laughs> other name. Trisha Sanders, 33, changing my credit card name to Stolen Card. And then wait to see if anybody noticed. Nice. <laughs> Hippie Patriot. Uh, I don't think I've looked at my own card for years, let alone a store clerk. Mm-hmm. Brandish finger guns. I can't remember the last time someone read my name on my card. Right. And if they did, they'd see my wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. And bovine scatology. Hate. Did you see that hateful white male clerk who didn't offer the trans person a bag to carry out his goods oh, in his hands? Oh, doesn't oh. match how you identify. Oh, no. Right. You got to give me a bag. More than just keeping a card but their safe. eyes do meet. Yeah, it's a, it's he's got his hands full. Yeah, he's, and no offer of, Trinity. would you like a bag for that? Nothing. <laughs> That's rude. Clear discrimination right there. Clear I, hatred. I hate that when they don't offer you a bag. Mm-hmm. And then you have to be like, yeah. can I get a bag, Beavis? Come right. On. Right. So that was clearly hate, clearly. anti-trans hate. Exactly. Hmm. So he yeah. smiled, but mm-hmm. inside he was thinking, you know what? I'll show him. Mm-hmm. I'm not giving him a bag. <laughs> 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 we know what's in the heart of white people. Yeah. Mm. Sheer. Yeah. Unadulterated hatred and There's, racism. Right. Their smiles mm-hmm. hide the hate. Um. Speaking of which, uh, the trans woman. Is in fact headed for the Olympic Games mm. as uh, you know the female weightlifter from New Zealand. Okay, she's in. There she is, uh, oh, armpit yeah. hair and everything. That's great. Oh, all right. Look how, look how lovely she is. She's beautiful. She is absolutely, absolutely lovely, hmm. and uh, a real strong, beautiful woman as well. Um, strong, I'm sure, in in both spirit and physically. So you wouldn't say he's a damn sexy man. No, You'd because that's he's... a beautiful woman. Uh-huh. That's what I'd say. No, you can't say he's a damn sexy man because mm-hmm. he's not a man for right. one thing. Right. So, so so this individual has had the benefit of being both a damn sexy man and a damn sexy woman. Yes. Right. And that's unusual. But uh, uh, she, she, she'll be in the Olympics. <laughs> there you go. She'll be in the Olympics. <laughs> oh, congratulations, New Zealand. A couple of years ago, she won the uh, – She no, she took second. In a world championship. So she's a medal contender, too. And she's 43 years old. Hmm. Well beyond her prime. I wonder what's keeping her going <laughs> against these other women. <laughs> what could it be? What could it, I don't know. I She must have a really good workout regimen. Sure. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, perhaps she eats incredibly well. Uh huh. And she trains really hard. Trains really hard. And she's kept her body in peak physical condition. I think Sexy that's clear. condition. Yes. If you will. Yes. So she'll be at the games uh, competing against other beautiful women, and we'll see what happens. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a fun Olympics, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, but are a bunch of people going to come down with COVID after it? I don't know. The Japanese people are a little bit worried about it. Mm. They're a little worried. Mm. Shouldn't, though. But all you have to do is get the vaccine. Ask the vaccine queen about that. Oh, no. What? Um, she's got a song about Ugh. it. Oh. The vaccine queen, okay. From I'm a vomit now. Ugh. Vaccine queen oh, God. Help achieve her. And you can't even sing. Don't take off your mask yet. Okay. Come back in four weeks and you'll get a second dose for free. <laughs> no conspiracy. You are the vaccine queen. Oh, man. Gut check. Stop. Oh, no. Oof. Oh, well. Oof. Could have lived my, my entire life without seeing that. Society, it was... Mm. It's a good run. 
Pathead Pew Pew One Pew uh, saw this, and uh, apparently this is going around making the rounds. It's uh, Dr. St. Fauci. Oh, God. The vaccinator. Oh, gross. <laughs> A cartoon. He's holding a large syringe. He's been working out a bit, and uh, has he? Yeah, I thought it was just his yeah. natural body. Well, it is. Yeah, right there. Uh-huh. It's, he's, he doesn't usually have his shirt off, and you see the kind of work he puts in on his body right there. Are his fifteen minutes up yet? Can we move on, please? Nope. <laughs> ah, they're sure not. Good. Good. No, it's a. Mm-hmm. It's a good time, America. Also from uh, Spencer Durant. This is part of an email I received from a oh, PR yeah. person working in tourism. Hard pass. <laughs> but I think I need to add this new word. Uh, so this is a new word for Pat Gray Bingo, maybe. Oh, vaxcation? Yeah. What exactly is a vaxcation? That's what he got. Okay. Just what it sounds like. A vacation for the COVID vaccinated. You get a vaxcation. That's gross. Yeah, he said the best part of the email started out with, Mm. you're vaccinated and ready to travel, but which cities offer the most bang for your buck while keeping you safe? I don't know. So that's what they're that's what they're doing now. They're 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 starting to to uh, segregate us into which places are the safest uh, for for those that Mm -hmm. have the vaccine. And speaking of the vaccine, this is really sad. From a, a woman named uh, Tammy who posted this on Twitter yesterday. A, a week ago today, my brother's 13-year-old son had his second uh, COVID shot. Less than three days later, he died. Oh, oh That's heartbreaking. The initial autopsy uh, results were that his heart was enlarged and there was some fluid surrounding it. He had no known health problems, was on no medications. Oh. Holy cow. Our family is devastated. I struggled with putting this out on Twitter. I am pro-vaccine. We vaccinated my own 14-year-old as soon as it was available. I know it's mostly safe, but Jacob is dead now. Ah, mm. oh, that's really sad. Now, they'll, they'll probably say, oh, that had nothing to do with it. CDC needs to investigate this. There have been other cases of myocarditis in young men receiving their second Pfizer shot. Wow. Have others died from it in the United States, or is my nephew the first? I think parents should be warned of the risk. Yeah, they should. You should know absolutely everything, and that's why we tell you these things every day. Uh, Because these stories are out there, they're legitimate, and you need to factor them in. I'm not, no, none of us are saying, don't take the vaccine. Um, you know, because I'm still considering it. Stu's actually gotten it. Stu's vaccinated. Uh, he took the Johnson and Johnson shot. And so, you know, it's not like we're anti-vaxxers. No. It's just that I think you need to know all the information and there are some weird things going on. I've explained why I'm never getting it and I'm just being Mm -hmm. honest, Mm -hmm. but you've got to make your own choices and you got to make your own choices for your children too. But you want to make well-informed choices. Talk to your family doctor. They know you better than anybody. Exactly. Especially when it comes to vaccinating the young. Because I'm not a doctor, but I don't... If I was 20, I I wouldn't get vaccinated. I wouldn't even consider it. Why? Why would I? Uh, But I don't know. It's uh, Again, that's between you and your healthcare professionals. And uh, you and your maker, you're maybe saying some prayers and trying to figure it out that way. Oh, wait. Keith Oberman would not like to hear that. No, he would not. He would, no, not, he would not appreciate that take. That is um, very true. But, you know, like we said, you, you make your own choices and they should be your choice. It shouldn't mm-hmm. be by force, whether by a government or a company. I think that's where a lot of people, such as yourself, kind of get, wait a minute. Why, why are you telling me I have to do this? Yeah. In and, fact, don't tell me I have yeah, to, because it, then it's over. It should have been as <laughs> simple that, as, here's the vaccine. Right. Here's here's what we know about it. Yes. Talk to your doctor. If you want it, get it. If you don't, then don't. But don't do this forcing me into a guilt trip and or, or taking part of society's benefits away from me because I'm not on the same side as you. Screw you. Or make it like I'm some kind of killer if I don't oh, get vaccinated. Oh, right. Thank you. Jeez. That's, I mean, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's go to Jessica in Massachusetts. Hey, Jessica, you're on the blaze. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. I just want to thank you for all you do. Love your show, and oh, I mostly you. agree with you on a lot of things. 
um, like the whole like gay pride thing. They uh-huh. celebrate the day gay marriage was made legal, and that should be about it. Like they don't need a whole month. Um, but um, when you were talking about Sesame Street and um, how um, showing married gay couples is sexualizing children, what about when they show straight couples? Like how is that any different? Like that's the one thing I, I think we have bigger battles to fight, and I think showing a gay married couple and they just keep it, hey, this is my two dads, isn't mm-hmm. that bad. And I don't think it's really necessarily well, because it's sexual. it's out of the it's out of the usual and the norm for them, and they don't understand it, and so then you're forced into that discussion, right? I mean, way before yeah, you probably it. want to. Whereas a man and a woman, the, the kid probably has a man and a woman as parents, and he knows what that's about. So you don't even get a discussion about that. Yeah. Uh, can I? Can yeah, I just say? I would there think. are kids who have gay parents, so it's probably a little bit nice for them to see it occasionally mm-hmm. when they're watching yeah. kids' shows. I just think that is one of the smaller battles to fight, and I think people get really upset about it now because there are so many bigger battles to fight on that issue. So when you see it even slightly, it sets your you know, the whole slippery slope thing in your head. And we've seen what the slippery slope has done and how it's being so thrown in our face. Right. And I'd rather, I think we should concentrate on those bigger things. And two gay parents on Sesame Street, I don't think is a huge issue. One other thing, though, before mm-hmm. you let me go. Okay. The, I just heard that the trans um, weightlifter is actually has a testicle injury. And it might, she might not be able to compete. <laughs> no, 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 way. no, it's Babylon B. Is that oh okay. Babylon B's been circulating that. Okay. Jessica, Jessica, what are what are some <laughs> it's good stuff. It's funny yeah. though. Jessica, That's what are great. what are some <laughs> weighty topics that you would be comfortable with Sesame Street uh, discussing in your absence with your children? I think the gay parents is about as far as I want it to go. Like hmm. the whole trans, the whole like um, story hour with drag queens. That's just ridiculous. Drag queens. It's not. It's their job. Are we going to start having prostitutes read books <laughs> or you know other sex workers read books to kids? Uh-huh. Being a, a drag queen is not a. It's a life choice. It's not right. It's not something that you have to do. It, it, there's no reason whatsoever to introduce kids to that. It's purely sexual. That's why people go to that show to watch. You know, you're not even allowed in most places to go to that show if you're under 18. So I don't understand why. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Jessica. Triple eight seven two seven B E C K. So that was a uh, a Babylon B story. <laughs> yeah. About about the, <laughs> the weightlifter, weightlifter from New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the female, the... well, the trans man, uh, woman, who's uh, in the weightlifting competition, sure. and uh, she has a testicle. <laughs> Bad timing for that injury too. <laughs> Considering the Olympics are, I mean, next month. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, I wish it, you almost wish it was true. That has to that be expected. Is if, ironic, right? Because you know, a lot of strain when you're lifting up those yeah, weights. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sniff, sniff. <laughs> uh, you excited for the Olympics? I am. I like yeah. the Olympics. Yeah, me too. Uh, I love them. Yeah, you, I love them. You excited for that uh, one chick who? Is hoping to get up on the podium so she can burn the American flag. That really pisses me off. Wow, that's uh, that's unbelievable. Well, I know who I'm rooting against. Yeah, for sure. In the Olympics, American or uh, not. Where, where is that story? Uh, uh, I thought it was, I thought it was in your hand, or else I wouldn't have brought it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it, it's right here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's why. That one. That one. Yeah. Uh, BMX freestyle rider Chelsea Wolf. <laughs> who qualified as an alternate to represent the United States at this year's Olympic Games. Oh, okay, she's just an alternate anyway. Oh, okay. So, but wait a minute. There's a bigger issue here. I didn't realize BMX racing was a, a medal. It started in 2008 as a medal sport. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think we have a bigger yeah. discussion here than, I know. than just this lady. Uh, she said last year that her goal was to win an Olympic medal so I can burn a U.S. flag on the podium. Wow. All right, get out. You're competing for the wrong country. Somebody who should be de- deported right there. Get I, out. I like it. My goal is to win the Olympics so I can burn a U.S. flag on the podium. This is what they focus on during a pandemic. Hurting trans children? What? What are we... T- what now? That's what she said. I feel like... So she wrote on Facebook March 25th, 2020, <laughs> along with a link to a pink news story. Oh, pink news. About uh, the Trump administration's... <laughs> 
dance on transgender girls in female athletics. Oh, so she posted this back in March of 2020. She identifies as a transgender woman. She identifies as that. So does that mean Chelsea Wolf is is a biological man competing against women? So are there two? No, I think. Huh? I don't know anymore. Oh, that's how she died. It says Wolf identifies as a transgender what's, what's her woman. name? What's the first name? Chelsea. Chelsea Wolf. Okay. Chelsea Wolf. All right. <laughs> Can't believe. And she wants to burn an American flag okay. on the podium. Chelsea Wolf, Wikipedia. First of all. No, that's a singer. First of all, uh, I don't think that the Olympic officials would allow you to burn. I think that would be stopped very quickly. Do you? I do. To quote I do. Well, they have said uh-huh. that they're not going to tolerate a bunch of demonstrations and protests. They're not going to put up with it. So I'm hoping that would include burning a U.S. flag on the podium. Jeez, these people. I. They just don't understand. They don't understand what a great country this is. Do we have some problems? Yes. Are you going to get angry about some of the stances that some people take that differ from yours? Yes. <clears throat> but you should be able to recognize the greatness of this nation anyway. It should be pretty self-evident. It should be. But you read a story like that, does it make you want to let go of a few explicatives? It does. Yes, it It really does. But I'm not going to. No, because, that would be bad. You know, if I said explicatives on this, oh. on this particular show, right. we might... We might not have a show tomorrow. Boy, so they probably won't. They push it though, don't they? Yeah, they do. And it's just, uh, why are you competing for the United States of America? Why are you wearing right. the American flag? I guarantee you, right. it's on your BMX Olympic uniform somewhere. You know, they allow you to perform for the country of your heritage. So, like, if you're mm. if you got Italian in you or you're Canadian or something, you can compete for them. And those are so much greater countries than the United States. Go compete there. <laughs> How far back can you go on that heritage card? I don't know. Huh. I don't know what the rule is, but I, I just know that if, like, uh, last Olympics, somebody was of Italian descent and they competed in Italy because they couldn't make the American team. So, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> think about, cool. like, you know, if you, if, you, if you know your family tree, you can find a connection to pretty much anywhere in the world. You got to right. find the most obscure country that your DNA is tied to and be like, yo, want a hero? <laughs> I'll compete for your country, your little right? Liechtenstein, and then you show up there and you mm-hmm. just, that would be awesome. It would. It'd be <laughs> fun. Uh, also, this was tweeted out from Justine Brooks Murray. Uh, it's a video of a contestant who spoke out at the Miss New Jersey pageant. Now, yeah. I don't think she won. No. And this might be why. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, I don't like that. Hi, Justine. Oh. Hello. What is the most important issue your generation is facing today, and why? Our generation is experiencing an epidemic of censorship and entitlement. And it's because uh. our professors and our celebrities are teaching students to be narcissists, to believe that any view that differs <laughs> from their own is an existential threat. And this is what wow. I experienced on my own campus with censorship to the point where people believe that speech is violence so that they can threaten other people with violence simply because they disagree with them. Very good. And now your social impact pitch. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Free speech. It is listed first under the Bill of Rights for a reason. Without it, uh-huh. all other liberties crumble. But today, we're watching free speech get hammered to the ground by the very institutions that are supposed to promote diversity of thought. Let me ask you something. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Are you a student? Are you a teacher? Are you a professor? The mere words, I am offended, are now being used as an excuse to silence students, fire professors, and cancel people simply because they do not toe the popular line of thought. And that's what I experienced, an Orwellian phenomenon dominating my own campus to the point where it got borderline violent. Mm. But through the Miss America organization, I will promote Miss New Jersey as Miss New Jersey by empowering the voices of young women who are not afraid to stand up for what they believe in and become a voice to be reckoned with. Um, I'm sorry, you've just been disqualified from the competition. Why did I? Bye-bye, you're canceled. Why? Because we don't like what you're saying. Get out. 
What, what did I just, and don't come back. I promoted not, the not, Constitution not, of the United not, First uh, Amendment <laughs> free speech. She was great. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't this good. I personally you know. believe who is? Who is? that who is? U.S. Americans are mm-hmm. unable to do so because, because uh, some, some people out there people in our nation our don't nation. have maps. They don't and have maps. And uh, I believe that our ed- education, like such as in South Africa, South Africa and uh, the Iraq, Iraq, everywhere like such as. Everywhere and like such as. I believe that they should. <laughs> so they should. Our education over here our in the U.S. should help the U.S. Help the U.S. should help no. South Africa. So, the South it Africa. should help the Iraq and, and the Asian countries. The Iraq and the Asian So we will be able to Time's build up. up our future. <laughs> You're right. So, Justine Brooke Murray, not certainly no Caitlin Upton, or no, her, right? No Miss South Carolina, Justine, South Carolina, 2007. That's for sure. Yeah. Can I just say that uh, what you just saw from that contestant, mm-hmm. Miss New Jersey, uh, just, uh, Justine Brooke Murray, that's probably going to be on a demo reel that she's going to send to Fox News or OANN or something like that. You'll 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 remember that right. name. Yeah. You'll see her soon. <laughs> that's a really good point. I'll bet you will. Well, she was really good too. She was eloquent. Yeah. She was well spoken. Yeah, she knew what she was talking about. I, it's refreshing. It it, it's 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 shameful in America that we see a video like that, and it's refreshing to see someone praising the Constitution and this, the greatest country to ever exist. But uh, those are uh, like oases. Oh, mm. That should be a word. Is that a word? Oases, oases in a desert. It's like an oasis in the desert. Mm-hmm. If a multiple mm-hmm. oasis, what's the what's the plural of oasis, Pat? Come on, you know this. No, I do. Really? I would say oasis, probably. So you think I'm right? It can't be oasis, yes. right? It is oasis. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, this is kind of fun. Before we get we uh, run out of time here, let's let's play the Joe Biden voter who now maybe has some regrets. <laughs> Check this out. I really thought. I hated Trump when he was in office. I really did. <laughs> but I'm a woman, and I can admit when I'm wrong. And y'all, I was dead ass wrong. I was wrong for what I, I, I regret it. I do. Never in a million Good. years would I have thought I would be like, hey, let's bring Trump back. But <laughs> let's bring Trump back. This ain't it. I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling this at all. This evening, I'm going to go break down. What? You don't love him? That's a good way to put it. I'm not feeling it either. <laughs> I'm really not. Uh, that's really cool. I wish you would have outlined some of the things that have uh, gotten her upset. She had to go break down. Yeah. yeah. But uh, no, she's Dang. not feeling the Joe Biden, apparently. Not so. feeling it. Hmm. Huh. huh. I love how everything has an ass in the middle of it. Uh, oh, really? All of a sudden. It, it, it emphasizes the point. Yeah. I like think. you're a grown-ass man. Sure. Or you're... Old ass bum in there. <laughs> Old ass bum in there. Or <laughs> whatever. I'm glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad she quickly realized that Joe Biden's not the answer for America. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? The answer just have a cookie today. Just order a cookie from kexicookie.com. Mm. Kexi.com, not cookie. Yeah. Kexi.com. K E K S I. K E K S I. Dot com. Dot com. And you'll just have deliciousness in your life. And that's the only thing that makes sense anymore. So as the world's yes. burning mm-hmm. and you're looking out the window at it, you're just eating a delicious chocolate chip. And you chip don't care anymore. Salted caramel cookie and oh. couldn't care less. Don't do this to me, dude. Don't do, do this it. to me. Just do it. You mm-hmm. won't regret it. We'll see you tomorrow. Back here on Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray. Only. On the Blaze Radio Network.